Um, right, so let's move on to our calibration uh, discussion for the evening. Uh, we're going to go over to Jules. Uh, we did white balance last time out. Indeed. Uh, that's an important um, aspect when it comes to picture quality, but also just as important um, is gamma. So let's, let's yep. start with SDR first of all, because okay. the vast majority of people are still watching SDR. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where gamma you know, initially came about because of, uh, you know, SDR content and CRT displays. So maybe explain the beginnings of it and then we'll move through to HDR and PQEOTF and so on. Yeah, I mean, gamma in basic layman's turn is how your display moves from black through to white. So it's all those shades of gray in between. And all of those have a particular luminous level. Um, in the world of CRT, which uh, like the dinosaurs, went on for 250 million years. Um, that was all related to how a CRT and cathode ray tube uh, performed in a very non-linear fashion. Uh, and it approximated to a power law of 2.4. And um, so um, getting your gamma right is really, really important because we spoke about, you say, white balance last time around, which is the tint of the display. The, the, the gamma um, also is part of this canvas that we, we, we often talk about that you need to get right before you can work on color. So your colors are placed on top of a, of a gray scale, which obviously has a white balance to it, but also these elements of luminance as they go from black through to white. Um, so when you put your colors on top of that those, those shades of gray, then you'll find that um, the colors uh, uh, change, the luminous of the colors change along with the, the, the steps going up from black through to white. Um, now the reference SDR gamma is a 2.4 um, power law, uh, not as um, often has been said, particularly by a particular review site, who shall not be named, 2.2. Uh, 2.2 .2 is, is not a reference gamma. It's not what we're using. Um, you know, I've just been contacted by a grading studio for this week. Can you come do a 2.4 gamma uh, calibration? 2.4 is everywhere. Um, uh, there was a, um, a slight interlude with BT1886, uh, which came about as um, grading studios were moving from CRT displays to other types of displays like LCD, and there was a need to basically be backwards compatible with what CRT had been doing. Um, and so um, given that CRT 2.4 was basically tied together, uh, there was a, a need to um, introduce a standard for, for LCDs and, and other kinds of displays that would mean that, you, that the, the, the content would be, uh, would be um, backwards compatible. Um, but the real, the real uh, drawback of, of that is it's, it's based around CRT. And here we are. 2022 um and um so you know as we have moved into hdr there have been new standards so we have something called st 2084 which based on uh, the the it's uh uh we've even changed the word we the way we call gamma it's eotf now or electro optical transfer function and it's no longer based around uh, crt technology but on perceptual quantization that is how the human visual system uh, works. So we've moved into new territory with HDR and, and gamma. So, I mean, that takes us up to the present day. And, and yep. one of the reasons um, that there is a lot of confusion is that a lot of people are still stuck thinking about gamma as a mm -hmm. curve um, mm -hmm. and, and as a function, which mm -hmm. uh, when you move over to, like you say, PQ, EOTF, it's slightly different. It's a lot more linear um, yep. in terms of, of what you're actually and what the display is showing. And that's great because digital displays are linear yep. um, and, and it ties in well and it's been designed that way. So let's take it a, a step forward and let, let's go with HDR. Why is, and, and I hear this all the time, oh, HDR, it's the Wild West. There's no standards for HDR uh -huh. and so on. There are standards for, uh -huh. for HDR and the you know PQ EOTF is one of those standards. So take, walk us through that and why it's important. St what standards for for HDR? Standards for the HDR and why why we should be sticking to ST twenty eighty four and well, why a display should be able to show that. Yeah, it's it's not um, you know it's not 
uh, things are still being worked on. Uh, uh, it's a it's a new format. Um, we've been we've had uh, SDR gamma for a hell of a long time since the 1930s, and it was all based on CRT, as we said. Um, so um, yeah, we we need standardization uh, across the industry. You can't have um, a million and one different uh, different formats, you know, format wars between gammas and, and etc. Um, so it's all it's all part of moving forward um, with, as you say, digital displays and the ability to to have a linear output. In fact, interesting about the CRT is that they made the it is it was non-linear, so it was a curve. But in fact, the the cameras did the opposite in order to give you uh, a linear response on your display. Um, so, um, of course, um, now we actually have displays who can do it naturally. They can do a linear gamma response naturally. So um, now the interesting thing is that um, um, BBC and NHK uh, went away and developed something called HLG, um, hybrid log gamma, just to uh, confuse everybody even more, um, which, um, you know, works um, actually, you know, pretty neat way doesn't it It detects the peak output of your display and allows you to um send the same broadcast effectively to to the little old granny who's still got her uh, sdr tv and you who with your hdr tv you can watch the same broadcast uh, and one person seeing in hdr and one person seeing in, in sdr uh, effectively um because of the way that hlg works yeah so i mean it's one of these subjects that we could fill a whole podcast with. Um, so apologies that we we are kind of rushing through this, but I, I think just getting the basics right uh, and talking about standards, because we see lots of comments on the internet saying, well, you know, you're talking about things that are 30, 40 years old and Rec 709s, you know, an old format and all the rest of it. It all exists for for reasons, and, and the reasons are that at the end of the day, it helps you get the best possible picture quality. And as things move on, and we are moving uh, on with things, um, you're going to get new technologies come along where we can, uh, picture quality becomes better because the displays are, are capable of showing everything that, that can be shown. Um, it's one of the, the reasons why I think 4K has become popular uh, at the time that it's become popular because of HDR also being available at the same time. Now, HDR could be on a 1080 uh, transfer. Uh -huh. You know, it's it's uh -huh. not just a 4K thing, HDR. It could work on, on any uh, uh, resolution, really. It's all about how um, when you're transferring film from film, um, the, the limitations were always the display devices. Uh -huh. um, so when things were transferred from film and, and so on um they, they were done in such a way that it mimicked the display and it was thought well that's not important we'll throw that away because the display is never going to be able to show it and you're never going to be able to see that uh, on the end display we've we've gone well beyond that now um and everything that is captured can be displayed um and displayed properly and gamma is one yep. of those main items that you have to get right because one of the the mistakes that people think of is that gamma is a cutoff if it's 2.2 then there's some kind of cutoff the camera's done it at 2.2 whatever that's not how it works the camera captures everything um and then you work on that within this envelope of mm -hmm. standards mm -hmm. and like you say at, at different luminance levels it should hit different things and you should be mm -hmm. able to see different things it's why um you get comments on forums and again we're not going to go into it in too much detail tonight but it's why you get comments on well my sony projector is able to show the brickwork um in that that wall behind that character in this scene yet uh, i saw a friend's jvc projector and there was no brickwork being seen whatsoever and then i looked at it on my oled tv and i could only see a little bit of the brickwork and so on and what you normally find is that the wrong gamma has been dialed in yep. um, and because you're seeing the detail your gamma is too low um, too low setting so a 2.2 or a 2.1 or even a 1.8 some uh, setups that I've seen and of course you are going to see lots of detail in the shadows because your gamma is set incorrectly it's mm -hmm. too bright exactly. at the lower end yep. um, so this is the reason why it's really important and why in certain things yes if you manipulate the gamma you're suddenly seeing more shadow detail yep. But actually, you're not supposed to be seeing that shadow. Exactly. Um, you're washing out the picture. Yep. So that's why it's important. 
Now, what, what we can do with SDR is, is, depending on the ambient light in the room, is we can switch out from a 2.4 gamma to a 2.2, which will elevate the shadow detail because when you're in a brighter room, your eyes will close down. You can't see the shadow detail that's been designed to, in the film or the TV program to be seen in the dark room. So we can do that, but you can't do that with HDR uh, because they're absolute values. So um, you either have to you have to break the EOTF. Um, that's the electro optical transfer function. It's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? But yeah. um, um, it was a lot gamma. easier when it was gamma. Gamma is so easy, to, <laughs> so much easier to say. Yeah. Of course, yeah. if you get too much gamma, you turn green and get very angry. That's it. Mm. That's it. Um, so we're going to leave it at that point there. But again, if you've got questions, if you want to know um, a little bit more about these subjects, we will circle back around and get more technical as the weeks go on and, and get a little bit more in depth and spend a little bit more time. Uh, this is basically the introduction into separate things uh, that make up a great image. Mm.